So hello friends. So in uh, previous class, we have started with uh, the uh, fourth unit of your syllabus, that is DC machines. In DC machines, uh, you have both the things, DC generator as well as DC motor. But DC generator part is very small, uh, just an introductory. So DC machine construction we have seen, and then we have seen the principle of operation of uh, DC machine as a DC generator. And then we have started with the EMF equation. So now in uh, for uh, EMF equation in DC generator, let us say P are the number of poles of the generator. Phi is the flux produced by each pole in Weber's, and N is the speed of armature in RPM. Z are the number of conductors, uh, armature conductors. So A is the number of parallel paths in which the Z number of conductors are divided. And we know that if it is a lap wind, lap type of winding, A is equal to P. That is A is equal to number of poles. And for wave type of winding, that A will be equal to two. So now we know that the induced EMF. Uh, in the conductor, according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, the average value of that EMF in each conductor it is given as E is equal to d phi by dt. That is E is equal to rate of cutting the flux. Okay. So uh, if we consider one revolution of the conductor, then in one revolution of conductor. It will cut the total flux produced by all the poles. That is phi into p, right? While the time required for completing one revolution is 60 by n seconds because the speed is n rpm. Therefore, e is equal to phi into p divided by 60 by n. That is equal to this n will be um, on numerator. So it will be phi p m by 60. Okay, so this is the EMF induced in one conductor. Now the conductors in one parallel path are always in series, and there are total z conductors with a number of parallel paths. That is, z upon a number of conductors are always in series and. EMF remains same across the parallel path, as you know that in parallel paths the voltage remains same. That is the EMF; it remains same. Now the total EMF can be expressed as this EMF is for one conductor, and how many conductors are there? Z by a conductors are there. So this E multiplied by Z by a will be the total EMF. Right, so that is equal to E is equal to phi p m by 60 into z by a. So this is the EMF equation of DC generator, and in short, you can remember this as E is equal to phi p m z upon 60 a, where this a is equal to p, that is number of poles for lap type of winding, and this a value will be equal to two for We have type of winding, right? So for solving the numericals, you should remember this EMF equation, and same EMF equation will be there as a back EMF in case of DC motor. So you have to remember this equation as E is equal to phi p n z by 60 into a, where phi is the flux, p are the number of poles, m is the speed in RPM, z are the number of conductors. 60 is a constant, and A is the number of parallel paths. And this A is equal to P for lap winding, and A is equal to 2 for wave type of winding. Okay. So with this, this uh, completes your DC generator part. Now, the machine, DC machine, working as a motor. So working principle of DC machine as a motor. now in only uh, i hope you have seen both the videos which i have 
uh, created for you and uh, the links uh, i have already provided it you uh, yesterday on uh, whatsapp group so i hope you might have uh, seen those uh, um, uh, videos okay now the principle of operation of dc motor can be stated in a single statement as this when a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field it experiences a mechanical force okay now the current carrying conductor means your uh, rotating part or the armature and placed in a magnetic field and that magnetic field will be generated by the uh, field winding okay so you can see uh, these four figures and from these four figures you can uh, i'll explain you the um, principle of operation of uh, dc machine as a motor so if question is asked to you in the exam as uh, draw and explain the working principle of dc machine as a motor so you have to draw all these four figures and you have to explain the uh, concept now this is the permanent magnet n and s the magnetic um, uh, flux or the um, uh, lines of uh, flux that we have to show it from the uh, north pole to south pole so this is the main flux whose direction i have shown by uh, on this uh, lines by arrow from north pole to south pole and this is referred as the main flux and main flux is generated by the field winding in the dc motor right and this is the armature conductor uh, which is placed inside so this uh, red dot okay so this is the conductor which is the armature conductor now this uh, to the armature also we are through the brush uh, arrangement uh, we are uh, applying the dc supply to that conductor so uh, current will flow through that conductor and uh, the, let us say in this second figure i have shown Uh, this is the current carrying conductor and the direction is shown uh, with a cross or plus sign that means the current is entering in the paper right so um, uh, that is the direction of current now if the direction of current is entering inside the paper according to the uh, right hand thumb rule we can uh, show the directions of this flux so that is right hand thumb that indicates the direction of current and the remaining four fingers will indicate the direction of flux right so it shows that if this current direction is moving inside this paper then the direction of this flux will be in the clockwise direction that's why i have shown on this circle now this is one flux generated by this current carrying conductor that is your armature winding and this is the main flux which is generated by the field winding now in order to operate this machine as a motor uh, you know that it requires two magnetic fields two magnetic fields must interact with each other so this is the one magnetic field produced by this uh, field winding called as main flux and this is the another magnetic field produced by the current carrying conductor now these two fields will interact with each other and i have shown in this figure both the fields this one field which is the uh, flowing in uh, one direction main flux from north to south pole due to this permanent magnets and this current carrying conductor uh, which is producing this circular rings okay that flux and the direction of this flux is in clockwise direction right now these two fluxes are interacting with each other if they will interact with each other you can see on this left hand side of the paper where i have put the cursor on that both the directions directions of both the fields are same both are moving upward but you will see uh, on the right hand side now i have put the cursor over there where the direction of one flux main flux is in upward direction whereas the flux produced by this uh, current carrying conductor it is in downward direction so 
both the fluxes are exactly in opposite direction right so here on the left hand side addition of fluxes will take place whereas on the right hand side cancellation of fluxes will take place right so now that you can see in this fourth figure where uh, on left hand side there is a gathering of flux that is the addition of flux has taken place whereas on the right hand side it is the weakening of flux has taken place that is this side the flux is very weak that's why now this conductor will experience a force in this particular direction from left to right and this is the direction of force right so with this four figures you can explain this principle of operation now uh, this is only one conductor i have shown such n number of conductors are uh, there in the motor and that's why this force will be generated as a torque and the direction of this force it is given by the fleming's left hand rule that i have already uh, told you um, in case of dc machine running as a generator it works on the principle of fleming's right hand rule whereas if this machine you want to work it as a motor then it works on the principle of fleming's left hand rule now fleming's left hand rule in the same manner of right hand thumb rule uh, you can explain the fleming's left hand uh, rule you have to um, stretch the first three fingers that is the thumb first finger and the middle finger in such a way that all these fingers are making right angle to each other right now the first finger indicates the lines of fluxes whereas the second finger or middle finger it represents the direction of current and the third finger that is the thumb it will represent the direction of motion so this is the fleming's left hand rule and uh, here it is shown first finger showing the flux direction middle finger showing the direction of current and the motion of that conductor will be shown by the thumb and this three fingers they are acting as if they are the three axes x y and z perpendicular to each other now the magnitude of the force experienced by the conductor in a motor it is given by f is equal to b into i into l sin theta newtons similar to the magnitude of force uh, the, the emf which was generated uh, in the uh, generator that was b into uh, b l v sin theta so here instead of b l v sin theta it will be b l i sin theta because instead of voltage it will be current now so f is equal to b into i into l sin theta newtons where b is the flux density due to flux produced by the field winding that is the main flux and l is the actual length of the conductor i is the magnitude of the current through the conductor and theta is the angle between the conductor and the plane of the flux now when the conductor is at right angle to the plane of the flux that is theta is equal to 90 degree and the current carrying conductor experiences a maximum force so uh, similar to the um, previous uh, generator case okay now the back emf concept as it is a um, it is like a generator uh, in um, we have seen that in the generating action when the conductor cuts the lines of flux emf gets induced in the conductor in a dc motor after a motoring action armature starts rotating and armature conductor cuts the main flux so is there a generating action existing in motor after motoring action so yes so there is an induced emf in the rotating armature conductors according to faraday's law of electromagnetic induction okay 
this induced emf in the armature always acts as in the opposite direction to the supply voltage and this is according to the lenz's law which states that the direction of the induced emf is always to oppose the very cause of producing it so this we have already seen in three phase induction motor also so in a dc motor electrical input that is the supply voltage is the cause of the armature current and the motoring action and hence this induced emf opposes the supply voltage right this emf tries to set up a current through the armature which is in the opposite direction so that which supply voltage is forcing the conductor as this emf always opposes the supply voltage it is called as the back emf and denoted as eb though it is denoted as eb basically it is generated by the generating action generating action which we have seen earlier in case of generator so its magnitude can be determined by the same emf equation as that of uh, the generator action that is eb or e is equal to phi p n z upon 60a where phi is the flux p number of uh, poles n is the speed z are the number of conductors 60 is constant and a it is having two values for lap winding it is equal to p and for um, this uh, um, lap winding and wave winding so for wave winding a value it is equal to 2 okay now thus the emf shows the this emf uh, i have shown here in opposite direction to the supply voltage right so in this back emf you can see this back emf it is having the polarity plus and minus exactly opposite to the supply voltage polarity this is the supply voltage and the current ia is also flowing in opposite direction to this so ia is flowing in this whereas eb is in this direction okay now uh, if the armature resistance then equivalent circuit of this you can see uh, this is the uh, symbolic representation of a dc motor you can show a circle uh, this two brushes you can show uh, so brushes and then this is the uh, armature winding of that and field winding you have to show separately here so field winding and to field winding again you are applying the separate supply then if you want to draw equivalent circuit of this this further you can uh, divide in two parts one is eb which is with this polarity which is exactly opposite to the supply voltage and one internal resistance of this that is the ra armature resistance so which is shown over here so if we we'll, uh, write the emf equation or voltage equation of this so that is from by applying kvl to this loop if you will apply it is equal to v is equal to eb plus ia into ra plus the drop across this brushes right so from this equivalent circuit the voltage equation of dc motor you can write it as v is equal to eb plus ia ra plus brush drop but brush drop is practically very very small it is of the order of few uh, volts uh, not volts it is less than 1 volt so generally um, it is neglected so the voltage equation for dc motor it becomes v is equal to eb plus iara and from this equation if you want to find the value of armature current that you can find it out as v minus eb upon ra so ia is equal to v minus eb upon ra so these two equations this equation of ia this equation of voltage equation of dc motor then this eb that is back emf generated equation 5p n z by 60a so these are also important equations while solving the new equations okay then we'll move to the 
torque equation and after this torque equation we'll solve some numericals okay so now the um, uh, for um, torque equation of a dc motor the turning or twisting force is nothing but a torque we are calling it as a torque so consider a wheel so this is the wheel of radius r uh, rotation direction is this and a force is acting in this direction f so considering a wheel of radius r and um, acting uh, on it a force of f newton as shown in this figure right the wheel is rotating at a speed of n rpm because this wheel is nothing but your motor so this is the shaft of motor and this is the uh, rotating uh, direction direction of rotation of the motor so that force is acting on this is f so the angular speed of this motor that is omega equal to 2 pi n by 60 radians per second so work done in one revolution is capital w work done is equal to force into distance traveled in one revolution so distance traveled in one revolution is your um, periphery of this particular uh, uh, circle peri yatha so that periphery is nothing but 2 pi r so f into 2 pi r joules will be the work done so power developed that is equal to work done divided by time so work done is this f into 2 pi r and time for one revolution n rpm that is n revolutions per minute so what is the time for one revolution it will be 60 divided by n so f upon 2 f into 2 pi r divided by 60 upon n that is equal to f into r into 2 pi n by 60 and therefore p is equal to torque into omega watts okay so let ta be the gross torque developed by the armature motor it is also called as the armature torque the gross mechanical power developed in the armature is eb into ia so from power equation you can say uh, that is the Mm, uh, power developed or um, it is the uh, for no load speed uh, e b at no load speed and i a uh, at no load speed multiplication of this will be the power developed which will be required for frictional and windage and iron losses coverage so uh, that's why uh, this e b by i a is uh, the power developed um uh, in the armature so the speed of the motor is uh, if the uh, speed of the motor is n rpm then the power in armature that is equal to armature torque into omega that is eb into ia that is the power in armature is equal to torque is ta into omega it is 2 pi n by 60 and the back emf of the motor as we have seen this uh, equation previously that is equal to 5 p n z by 60 a substitute this value of eb over here so you will get this 5 p n z by 60 a into ia is equal to ta into 2 pi n by 60 that is this equation and from this by rearranging this terms we will get equation of ta as 1 upon 2 pi Into phi into i a into p into z upon a or this one upon two pi that is equal to one point zero point one five nine. So you can replace this. You have to remember this equation also that T a that is the torque equation of a motor is equal to zero point one five nine into phi into i a into p into z upon a newton meter where. phi is the flux uh, in weber i is the armature current in amperes p number of poles z number of conductors and a it will be equal to p for lap winding and a will be equal to 2 for the wave type of winding okay so now with this we'll try to solve two numericals
i hope uh, time will permit to solve all these numericals okay uh, so we'll go fast a four pole lap round dc generator has a useful flux of 0.07 weber per pole so you are given that is capital p is equal to 4 as it is a lap wound so lap wound means a is equal to p that is equal to 4 dc generator has a useful flux that is phi is given phi is equal to 0.07 weber right calculate the generator emf that is e we want to calculate if it is rotated with a speed of 900 rpm that is n is given as 900 with the help of prime mover then armature consist of 440 number of conductors so z is given as uh, 440 also calculate the generated emf if lap wound armature is replaced by wave wound armature that means uh, A is equal to two now. So for that A is equal to two, what will be the value of that EMF? Right. So we'll begin with uh, this numerical by writing given data. P is equal to four. Z is four hundred forty. Phi is equal to point zero seven Weber. N is given as nine hundred RPM. Then for lap winding, A is equal to P is equal to four. And for wave winding, A is equal to P, uh, sorry, A is equal to two. So these are the two uh, conditions for which we want to find the value of E. Formula is same. E is equal to phi P n z by sixty A, where phi is given as point zero seven. Substitute the value phi as point zero seven, P as four, n as nine hundred, z as uh, Uh, 440, 60 as it is, and A is equal to P is equal to 4 for lap wound. After solving this, simplifying this, we'll get it as answer as 462 volts. Now for wave winding, the same numerical you want to solve, only you have to replace this A value as 2 for wave winding. So e is equal to phi p n z by 60 a. All the values of numerator will remain same. 0.074900440 divided by 60 also same. Only difference is here a value for lap winding it is equal to p that is 4 and here for wave winding it is a replaced by 2. That's all. So this speed uh, EMF you will get it as. Double this, double than this. So it is coming as nine hundred and twenty-four volts. I hope you understood this numerical. The next, a four-pole lap-wound DC generator has forty-two coils with eight turns per coil. So what is given? P is given as four. Lap-wound. Lap-wound means uh, P is equal to A. A is equal to P is given. And forty-two coils with eight turns. So, how many turns are there? Forty-two uh, coils and eight turns. So, total turns are forty-two into eight. And for one turn, we'll have two conductors. So, Z is equal to two into forty-two into eight. So, that is the value of Z. And it is given at eleven twenty RPM. That is, N is given as eleven hundred twenty RPM. Useful flux phi is given as 21 milliweber. That is 21 into 10 raised to minus 3. Calculate generated EMF and uh, find the speed uh, which is to be uh, driven to generate the same EMF as calculated above with wave wound. So instead of uh, lap wound, it is wave wound. And for the same back EMF, what is the value of speed that you have to calculate? Okay. So given data P is 4. Phi is equal to 21 into 10 raised to minus 3. N is equal to 1120 RPM. A is equal to P is equal to 4 for lap wound. So Z is equal to our calculated number of coils 42 into turns 8 into 2. So that is equal to 672 Z. 
Now E is equal to phi p n z upon 60 a. Substitute the values. A is 4. That is A is equal to P is equal to 4. Phi is given. P is given. N is given. And Z is given. So you substitute all these values. You will get E value as 263.42 volt. Now for this E and A is equal to 2. Because uh, it is wave wound now. For this wave wound, that is A is equal to two and E remains same, two hundred sixty three point forty two. We need to find the speed. So E is equal to phi p n z by sixty A. From this relation, you substitute E value as this, two hundred sixty three point forty two. Phi you substitute same, twenty one into ten raised to minus three. P you substitute same, four. N we need to calculate. Z is same, sixty. And a is now two, so for this values we want to find value of n. If you will simplify this, you will find that n is 560 rpm. So next numerical is for motor now. So for a 220 volt DC motor, it has an armature resistance of 0.75 ohm. So V is given to you as 220 volt. Then R A is given as 0.75 ohm. It is drawing an armature current of 30 ampere. That is I A is given as 30, driving a certain load. Calculate the induced E M F in the motor under this condition. That is, you need to find E B, right? So we'll write first given data. V is equal to 220 volt. R A is equal to 0.75. I A is 30 ampere and E B we need to find. So from the uh, voltage equation of uh, DC motor, we can write V is equal to E B plus I A R A, right? So substitute the value. V is equal to 220. E B we need to find. I A is 30 ampere and R A is given as 0.75. So from this, we can find E B as 220 minus this 30 into 0.75. So it is coming out as E B is equal to 197.5 volts. Okay, the next numerical. Find the useful flux per pole. That is phi. We need to find on no load of a 250 volt. That is V is given as 250. P capital P is given as six six pole shunt motor having. Two circuit connected armature. Two circuit connected armature means what? It is the uh, wave winding. That is A is equal to two. Two circuit connected means wave winding. It is given. Okay, and uh, with two twenty conductors. That is Z is given as two hundred twenty. At normal working temperature, the overall armature resistance, including brushes, is point two ohm. That is R A is given to you as 0.2. The armature current is 13.3 ampere. That is, I A is given to you on 13.3 at uh, a no load speed of 908 rpm. That is, uh, M is given no load uh, 908 rpm. Okay. So from this first we will write given data. V is equal to 250 volt. P is equal to 6. Z is equal to 220. A is equal to 2 because It is a two circuit armature. Two circuit armature means it is a wave type of winding. It is given. So A is equal to two. R A is given 0.2 ohm. I A is given 30.3 ampere and N no load. It is given as 908 rpm. Now from the E M F equation of this motor, you can write it as V is equal to E B plus I A R A. So from this you can find the value of E B. Substitute value of V as 250 EB plus I A is 13.3 R A is 0.2. So from this you can find the value of EB. So EB is coming out as 247.34 volts. Now the back EMF it is given by the equation which we have derived for generator. That is EB is equal to phi P N Z upon 60 A. So from this. You substitute the value of E B as 247.34. Phi is uh, we want to calculate. So phi P 
it is given as 6 substitute the value of p as 6 n it is given as 908 so 908 z given as 220 60 into a it is for wave winding a is given as two circuit armature so a is given as 2 so from this if we will simplify this we will get the value of phi as 24.76 mini weber okay so this is the uh, now uh, whether time will permit us yes we'll start next numerical if i'll be able to finish it off it's okay otherwise the next lecture will repeat it again okay a eight pole dc motor takes 80 ampere armature current from supply so p is given as 8 then ia is given as 80 ampere if flux per pole of the motor is 50 milliweber so phi is given to you as 50 into 10 raised to minus 3 weber and armature has total 720 conductors that is z is given 720 conductors it is lap long lap long means a is equal to p and it is equal to 8 calculate the gross torque developed by the motor armature okay now what is this is the question asked in uh, sppu exam uh, in december uh, 2010 for 6 mark okay so i'll write first given data from this p is equal to 8 i is equal to 80 ampere phi is equal to 50 into 10 raised to minus 3 weber a is equal to p is equal to 8 because it is a lap wound motor and z is equal to 720 so now we know that ta ta equation it is equal to 0 0.159 into phi into ia into p of pz upon a or instead of 0 0.159 you can write even 1 upon 2 pi okay so directly you can remember this formula so that it will be very easy to solve so ta is equal to 0.5 uh, 0.159 into phi value you substitute 50 into 10 raised to minus 3 into ia given as 80 into p is 8 z is 720 and a is equal to p is equal to 8 substitute this simplify this you will get the value of ta as 458.366 newton meter so i hope uh, We'll stop here today. Uh, next numerical we'll solve in the next class because uh, I don't think time will permit us now. It's already uh, one. Or we'll first uh, start and uh, try to finish it off if possible. Only one minute is left. A four pole lap wound DC motor has 540 conductors. So, P is given you to you as 4, then uh, lap wound uh, DC motor, so for lap wound A is equal to P is equal to 4, Z is given as 540, uh, it is uh, found to be 